Hi, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we are not going to be outside. Again, it's 40 degrees outside. It's cold, it's rainy, and there's absolutely nothing that I can do with the bees. The chicken coop, well, it's ready to be put together out in the yard, so there's really nothing that I can do with the chickens. So today, we are going to do what's in this box. And I'm going to get my knife and open it up, and we're going to see together what's in this box. I can tell you that what is in this box cost me $80. I can tell you that what's in this box will save me that amount of money many times over. Oh, and did I mention how heavy this box is? Very heavy. Ah! All right, today we are going to be making wine. This is a wine kit. It cost me $80 on Amazon. And I'm going to take you through the process to make real wine. We're not making mead and we're not making grape juice into wine. We're gonna make the real thing, some cab. Let's get started. While I'm opening this box, I'm gonna let you know some of the things that you're going to need. You're going to need, for a batch of wine this big, you're going to need a six or 6.5 gallon carboy well, I don't know why it's called a carboy. It doesn't make any sense to me. It's like a valet. We're not, we're not making, we're not gonna make wine with a valet, but we're gonna make it in a carboy. It's a glass container. I'll show you what it looks like. And you can purchase this on Amazon for about $35. Be very, very careful. It's tempered glass. It'll shatter. You are also going to need one of these. Now you can get this for about six or seven dollars on Amazon. It is a uh, hydrometer, I believe is what it's called. And what this is going to do is it's going to tell us what the sugar content is in the solution, in the grape juice, as well as what our potential alcohol output will be. It's important, you have to have one of these. All right, inside the kit, we're going to get some directions that tell us step by step what to do. Very important, do not throw these away. You're going to need them for the next 30 days. We also have some clarifier. This is what you add to the wine when you're ready to stabilize it and drop the yeast out of the solution. Very important if you want pretty wine. And then we have some yeast, and we are not going to use their yeast, I'm going to use my own yeast. Um, I had used the yeast that came with the wine kit from one of my earlier kits. Now, granted it was a cheaper kit, but the wine didn't taste like I thought it would, and maybe it's got to age. I've, I've moved it down to the basement to age. It's going to be sitting there for a couple of years. And one of my friends who is a wine drinker, now he's not a sommelier, by any stretch of the imagination, but he's a wine drinker and a wine maker, and he said that it's kind of green and it's going to take a little bit of time to age to get that out of there. We are also not going to be adding any oak chips. Um, and this comes with oak chips. I don't think I'm going to be adding these because these add a very distinct flavor and I kind of want this wine to be sweet. Sweet and dry. But we're going to use our own, our own yeast. Oh. Oh, wait a second. Okay. We are going to be using the yeast that came in this kit. They sent good yeast. I didn't read this. This is yeast nutrient. Basically, we're going to feed the yeast after it's consumed a lot of the uh, sugars and turn them into alcohol. We're going to feed them some more so that they can keep going. Kind of like vitamins for yeast. I believe these are oak chips. I believe. A little bit darker than the last batch, but I believe these are oak chips. We'll find out when we read the directions. And then last but not least, we have some wine. This wine is in a giant bladder, and it's really a challenge to get it out of here. We're not going to be using the spout that they provide. We have another way. Okay, this is where it gets kind of crazy. There's nothing worse than managing all of this clear plastic tubing and trying to keep it clean, i.e. it can't touch anything, uh, while transferring wine back and forth between your carboy and the box and another carboy when you rack it later on, but we'll explain all that in a minute. But these are a pain in the butt, but they're a necessary pain in the butt. 
you're going to have to have these. I'm not sure what I paid for this. I think this was like $10, but there's more. You're also going to need a big one. And this one, I'm not sure what I paid for this. Maybe, maybe $15, $20. You only have to buy this once. Um, some of the upfront costs on this are a little bit steep, but once you get going, your wine is gonna come out to just a couple, couple dollars a bottle. You'll need this in about a week. Okay, and this is something else you're gonna need. It's a degasser. Um, while the yeast is consuming the sugar, its byproduct is alcohol, but its byproduct is also CO2, and you don't want that gas in the wine. I think it might foul the flavor, I'm not sure. But every day, you can either shake the carboy, which is hard to do on a big one. We did it on the small jug, it's kind of easy. On the uh, six gallon one, it's kind of tough because you don't want to knock it over and you don't want to break it. You hook this to your drill, it spins, and it will degas your solution. And the last thing you're going to need, well, not the last thing, the last thing you're going to need to make the wine is an airlock. This lets the CO2 gas escape from the wine that you're making, but it doesn't let any bacteria or wild yeast get back down into your, into your wine. Um, after you're done, and after 30 days have gone by, you're going to need about 24 bottles, 26 bottles, which you can also buy on Amazon. I'll put all this stuff down in the, in the description if you're interested in making wine. Um, and then you're going to need some corks, a way to cork the bottles, and then you can get happy and label the bottles. That's what I've done, and I will show you some of those at the end. Um, but let's get started on this project. All right, the first thing we need to do is transfer the grape juice, which is Cabernet grape juice, made from real Cabernet grapes. I'm not sure whether this comes from California or Chile. It doesn't matter. We have Cabernet grape juice. We have to transfer this into the carboy, but we can't do that until we've sanitized everything. So let's start sanitizing. Pick up a sprayer. You're going to need it. First, I want to sanitize the counter where I'm going to be working. Everything that may come into contact with the wine. I don't want any wild yeast in here. I'm going to sanitize my components. Okay, now this is where it gets challenging. Hoses, wires, towels, everything, everywhere. It's kind of a, kind of a nightmare. What a fun nightmare. We're gonna have wine when we're done. So this is a clean bath towel. The wife was kind enough to let me use it. We've sanitized under it. Now we're actually going to sanitize the towel. Even though it's clean, I don't want any wild yeast getting in my wine. All right, now let's sanitize our carboy. Now somebody's going to tell me, and I know there's a wine maker out there, and they're gonna say, listen, don't set it on a towel. You can't sanitize a towel. I'm doing the best I can. I also don't wanna break this on a granite countertop. So let's go ahead and Get this sprayed. I'm just going to kind of coat the inside of it. And be very careful with this. Like I said, this is tempered glass. If it breaks, it's going to shatter. It could cut you. My buddy, who's been helping me make wine, has told me horror stories about people cutting their feet and cutting their hands. And I guess he's told me these stories to make sure that I'm 100% careful. I don't know. We'll see. All right. Let that sit for a minute. I think the rule is like two minutes. This is a challenge. Now my buddy's watching this saying, what are you doing? You're not supposed to fear the foam. I'm kind of fearing the foam a little bit. Say la vie. Alright, now the last thing I want to do is sanitize the outside of that. And I'll just leave that sit on there. It's going to the floor. Now this is where the fun begins. We have to get the grape juice out of that box and into this jug. So now again, anything that comes in contact with the wine, we have to sanitize, even if we're just touching the bag. I guess cleanliness matters when you're doing wine. Alright, so now we're just going to cut the corner off of this. Now this is a double bag. It's bagged twice, so you have to cut kind of far down. Alright, there's 
the wine. Now for the fun, again, managing the hoses. What we're going to do is take this, put this end in our carboy. We're going to put this end in the bag of wine. We're going to siphon. And now we wait. Oh, this is, by the way, this is like two and a half gallons of Cabernet grape juice, and it is concentrated, so we are going to add water to bring it up to the six gallon level. <clears throat> I don't know whether you can tell. I really don't want to move it, but I don't know whether you can tell how dark that is. That is, that is beautiful. Oops, we don't want to do that. We'll just leave it be. I don't want to have a grape juice disaster because let me tell you, you think red wine will stain your clothes or your carpet or whatever? You spill this. Ah, stain's never coming out. It'll probably stain the wood, the wood floor. Well, I hope you enjoy this detour from bees and, and now from chickens, but not a whole lot you can do on a cold, rainy day. It's 40 degrees outside and raining. It's been raining for days. The backyard's a swamp. Poor bees. You know, my goal was to make some pollen patties and get some pollen patties out on the hives today so that these girls can start building up their, their brood, which I believe is already pretty strong anyways. I, I took a peek through the top and those, those hives are packed, but I really want to get the, the new spring bees going so that uh, as soon as the weather breaks, they can run down to the fruit farm down the street and gather me some nectar. But that whole mission was aborted. Cold and rain, cold and rain. So we're making wine today. This will keep you warm on a, on a cold, wet day. All right, now, now you have to be careful. Oh, goodness. All right. We're almost there. Now we need to fill it the rest of the way with water. Now, unlike mead, I don't have to use distilled water. I can use RO water. There's plenty of nutrients in the grape juice and we have the nutrient pack that we're going to add, I believe after seven days, but we'll start reading the directions here. Step one, clean all of your equipment. We've done that. Step two, pour contents of the juice bag into the primary fermenter. We've done that. Top the fermenter up to the six gallon mark. Now. On this carboy, six gallons is this lip. I've measured it once before and I'm not going to measure it again, but just trust me. On the carboy that I include in the link in the description, this lip is the six gallon mark. So let's do that now. I'm going to use RO water. And because my RO system only holds about a gallon and a half at a time, I set some aside early this morning. Alright, now we have to homogenize it, so we have to mix this up. It says thoroughly mix it. We're going to thoroughly mix it. Bring in the drill. Again, this has been sanitized. Now, I believe we're going to add the yeast. Not sure, but I believe so. Oh no, now we have to take a gravity reading. See, I didn't mention you're gonna need one of these too. It's a little plastic jobby. But this is how we take our gravity reading. Everything must be sanitized. Oh, and be careful, this is glass as well. And people say, and I, I haven't heated this warning yet, and I, I probably should. People say that when you buy one of these, buy two of them, because inevitably you're going to break one. It's a very fragile glass device. I don't have a second one, so I've got to handle that one with care. See how tricky this is? Now I need to get this out of here. This out of here. Ah, crisis! 
get all that wine, oh, back in there. If I were taller, it would probably be easier. Okay, so when you get your kit, they're gonna give you one of these. This is a hydrometer. And what this does is this measures the specific gravity. Why they call it that, I don't know. Um, I'm not a chemist, I guess you can look it up. But what this does is it measures the amount of sugar you have in the solution. How many fermentable sugars are in here? Uh, what the kit calls for is 1.080 or better. We're gonna measure this and hopefully it's better. The more sugar you have, the higher your alcohol output. Bring the eyes into the picture here. All right. Okay, we are at 1.110, which means we are better than the 1.080 that they recommend. That's good. This will also tell you what your potential alcohol content is gonna be when you're done, if all of the sugars ferment, and that's what we want. We want a dry wine. The potential alcohol created by this will be, 13 and a half percent. So I guess that's right where we want it. All right, this goes back in. All right, now it's time to pitch our yeast. I know, just wanna make sure. Now this is EC1118, I believe this is a champagne yeast, I think. And I think what that's going to do is allow a lot of the flavors from the grapes to escape into the wine. All right, now we just pour our yeast in. All right, now we are at the point where we airlock it. So we want to clean our airlock thoroughly. It's very important as well. Now I'm going to spray this. Add some more clean water. Add a lid. Now my friends, we are making wine. Okay, now all we have left to do we've reached the stage where the wine is going to begin to ferment. We are actually making wine at this point. Now, I didn't tell you this, when you buy your carboy, you're going to have to buy two of them. And the reason is, is that two more times, well, one more time throughout this process, maybe two more times throughout this process, you're going to have to transfer the contents of this from this carboy into another carboy and maybe back again. Um, it's called racking your wine. To be honest, I don't know what the purpose is. I thought the purpose was to remove the sediment and that I believe is what the purpose of the second racking is. But the first racking, According to the directions, they want me to take the sediment and everything into the next carboy, so I don't know why I'm doing that. I know that you don't want to introduce air to your mixture that much throughout the process because you don't want to make vinegar. If you have too much air in the wine, it's going to make vinegar. However, I do recommend you buy two of these. You're going to need, you're going to need at least two because you are going to have to rack back and forth a few times before you bottle. Now, in one week, it wants me to come back and check for the specific gravity reading. Um, and that will let me know if the alcohol is where this company believes that it should be in seven days. After that has happened, I will add this. This is the yeast nutrient. This is going to uh, give my yeast that extra oomph to keep going and continue to metabolize the sugar and create alcohol. Upon racking, the first racking in seven days, if I decide to use the oak chips, I will put these down in the bottom of the other carboy, dump the new wine onto the top of it. It's what they say to do. That's what I'll do if I decide to use the oak. I don't know whether I'm going to use the oak yet. It's very strong. It really imparts a, lot of, it imparts a lot of flavor to your wine. And if you like an oaky wine, this will do it. It kind of replicates putting it in a barrel, I guess. And then we have some potassium metasulfate and some potassium sorbate. This is what you use according to the directions to condition the wine right before bottling. You want to make sure that there is no more yeast doing anything. We don't want any more active yeast because if you bottle wine that is not done fermenting or you haven't shut the yeast off, you can create what are called bottle bombs. It will continue to produce alcohol by eating sugar and it could actually 
explode your bottle um, because it is going to continue to give off CO2. And if you've got a cork, you've got a bottle bomb. So you don't want to do that. Um, so make sure you use your wine conditioner. And then the very last thing that they had given us, and this is right before you bottle um, or the last step before you bottle. Uh, in the last batch I made, they gave me some of this. You put part one in, wait five minutes, put part two in, you wait five minutes, then you mix it all together and homogenize it. Uh, and then you let it sit for another five to seven days. And what that does is that will take any yeast that is active inside the solution and force it to drop out, of, out in the bottom. And then you bottle it and you have a nice clear wine that you can hold up to a light and it will look just like you get at the store and it's gonna taste the same too. So I guess the lesson to be learned is, is that this is expensive up front, but once you have the equipment, now you're looking at about $2 a, a bottle for your wine, which you can't beat. And yeah, maybe $2.75. All right, well, there you go. In 30 days, you're going to have some wine. Hope you enjoy making it as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Anyways, if you like this video, do me a favor. Give me a thumbs up. If you have something to say, by all means, comment. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, doesn't cost you anything. You can go on all these adventures with me, and I hope that next week we'll be back with the bees in some shape or form. With all that said, I want to thank you for watching. Have a great day. Be happy. I'll see you next time.